Hello, you're watching Studio Ken. Make sure you don't miss any episode of Studio Ken by subscribing to the YouTube channel. To subscribe, search for Studio Ken on YouTube, click subscribe on the bottom right of your screen and set a reminder. You can also watch Studio Ken on Diamond TV on Wednesday at 18.30 and on Saturday at 19 hours. Studio Ken, the home of Kennedy Gondway on YouTube. My guest on Studio Ken is someone who needs very little introduction. Enoch Mwepo, a Zambian football star. Enoch, thank you very much for hosting us. Thank you, Rupa. We saw pictures at the weekend of you engaging. Tell us about this woman who stole your heart. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to say anyway. <laughs> but I would say, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it, was a special, it was a special day for me in my life. I think I was ready for it. I prepared so special of everything about it and I feel like I love this woman. She she's she's the li missing link I was I was uh, I was missing in my whole life. What is it that you love about her? She's a vicious woman, she's a prayerful woman, she's strong, she's mature and she's a self reliant person. And yeah, so with such kind of 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 a heart that she has, really inspired me, and she's just some someone that has been sent by God for me. We're looking forward to meeting her, but she's not here, was she? Uh, actually, she's doing attachments, so she's in school, and uh, so that's why she's not here. Which school? What is she studying? She's uh, she's at uh, Lusango University in Monze. So she's now doing attachments in Mazabuka, her final attachments, then she'll be graduating in September. So yeah, that's what, so she's studying public health, anyway. yeah, that's what she's doing. Were you at any point nervous that she may turn down your marriage proposal to her? Mm, actually not. I was really more than 100% that she would say yes for this because Looking at what we have achieved so far with her, it's massive. We have dated for two years now, and I feel like we have lived even more than 35, 35 years in, you know, together because she's just an awesome person. She's just a wonderful woman, and I just feel like it's something that God just gave for me because this is what I've been praying for, to find such kind of a woman, and God just sent her for me. So... Let me use football jargon uh, lightheartedly. Um, <laughs> when you are based, <laughs> when you are based in uh, Austria, in Europe, yeah. she's here and all that. Uh, someone would say uh, score before you go so to lock uh, your your investment or your woman. <laughs> is she expecting? Not really, not really. We this is the thing that we spoke about with her, mm. and we plan that we, of course, even after our sex, after our marriage. Because this is our principle in our family, and also it's written in the Bible. We are believers, and we respect, we fear God, and we want to just do what God requires us to do. So, personally, so for two years you've not had sex with her. For so for two years we have never had sex, and yeah, we just that we we get married soon, and yeah, then we can lock the the show down. <laughs> <laughs> so how soon are you planning to get married with her? Um, actually, we, we spoke about it and yeah, anyway, we just want to hear from our both parents what they think about it and stuff and then we will go for it probably next year. Let's talk about football now. You've been with um, Red Bull Salzburg for uh, three years now, 2017. Yeah. What's the next big move? Mm, we'll see. I think for me, um, what's important for me for now mm. is that I've developed I think um yeah three years is, is a long time in Europe and and I feel like I've settled now. I feel I can compete in other big leagues now because of course I've played in so many so many co tournaments or competitions and yeah I feel ready and hopefully one of the one of the teams comes for me and yeah I'll have there been any teams that have been coming. I'm sure they are there, of course, of course, they have been watching, following, and they're just waiting for any kind of move because if the club allows it also, and for me, I'm okay with what they will give, then definitely. But do you want to move? Have you hit a stage where you think you can go to the next league? I think for now, I've reached a stage that I can go to another league, but 
since now I'm playing a lot in my in my in the in the team, I feel like I'm I'm, I'm now part of the team and I just want to play more, play more all the time and I think a chance will come that a team will surely come and to be everywhere so that I can move on. So which are some of your dream clubs? Actually, I uh, I'm a Liverpool fan. Good, you tell me about Liverpool. I'm a Liverpool. You fan. played against Liverpool. What was the experience like? Wow, it was it was special for me. It, it was like a dream come to really. You know, the all of my career I've been dreaming to play at Anfield Stadium. So when 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 we just had that draw to say we're gonna play Liverpool, mm. I was like, this is a dream come true for me. And how was it like when finally you were there meeting all these other stars? It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. I've never had such a feeling to be part of that stadium. I felt like I belong there. And yeah, so this feeling keeps on coming, coming. And I feel like it's just God's way that I was able to play my first Champions League at that stadium as well, you know. So it's something special. And I just feel like God just paved the way for me. Who are some of the players, Liverpool players, that you spoke with after the game during? Uh, actually, I exchanged my t shirt with uh, my, my shirt with uh, Henderson. So I spoke some few words with him when. when what words were there? No, I was just like, you know, uh, I love your play, it was good. Uh, he also said, no, you also were great today, you know. And they uh, know, thanks so much for the shirt, you know. Yeah, hope to catch up soon, you know. He didn't say, we look forward to seeing you here playing with us? No, he didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't say that, but yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Now, um, they are very, for a long time, Zambia has not been good at exposing or exporting players to Europe. But your generation has uh, seen more than 10 players at the moment playing in Europe. Why do you think there's a shift? Um, I think with, with, with a group of players these days, I think things are changing. When you talk of the old days, it was really difficult, you know, because, because of maybe the education about football wasn't much there. But when you talk of our group, our generation, we have been educated, we have been advised, and we are able to follow what we have been advised, you know. So we know the good part and we know the bad part. So for me, I'm a disciplined player and I just want to play, I just want to enjoy football and just want to, to you know, to, to give it all of, of, of my, in my career, you know. So I think it's just about football education and try to be disciplined and focused and having the right mentality. For me, that, that's what I think is the right way to, to a great success. More special for me and in today's young generation. Yeah. Other than what you explain, um, what else is unique? Because you won the under 20 Africa Cup in 2017. Mm -hmm. Your generation yeah. won the under 20 uh, uh, Africa Cup. People could argue that because Zambia was playing at home, but we've seen it. Uh, where the tournament has been hosted by different countries mm -hmm. and uh, the only thing that Zambia has done is to qualify to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. But yours managed to win it. What is it about this generation? I think this generation, we, mm, we stayed together for, for quite a long time. I think some of the players gen we generated from the under-17 group and to the under-20. So we, we stayed for, for quite a long time together. So we knew each other very well. We coordinated very well on and off the pitch. And I think we believed in our abilities. We believed in one another, their strength, each, each, each other's strength. So I think that the way that helped us a lot and we could see the morale also from the fans. It, it gave us really super confident that we can show our skills on that pitch, you know. Like for me personally, I didn't expect that crowd to be, to, to be, you know, like, you know, in the stadium. Yet after winning the Africa Cup, the next big thing that was expected was for that team to qualify to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. You didn't. Why? The expectations were really high. Everybody was looking for that we shall surely make it to the, to the Olympics. But sometimes football, it's like this, you know, sometimes you never know where the problem is, you know, sometimes it's, it's just, I, sometimes I say it's the weather in football, the atmosphere in football, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, and, or maybe it's not just the right time for you guys to make it or to make it, you know, so I don't even know exactly what really made us not to qualify, but we were really uh, ready 
to make it to the Olympics, but just... Uh, Is it not painful that you win the Africa Cup in 2017, you failed to qualify for the under-23 Olympics? You are also a member of the senior national team, and the senior national team has not qualified for the Nations Cup in the last two, uh, two years or two occasions. For me as a player, it's really painful. It's, it's really sad, you know, to see to see the national team, the under-23, not qualifying for such tournaments because such tournaments are the tournaments that put a player at another level, put a a, the national team, of course, at another level. And if we cannot compete at that level, then we cannot compete, you know. We cannot, no, no, no any other team can put us there. And what I know about Zambia is that we have great, great players, you know. We have great, great players that can showcase their skills and can take their uh, football to another. What is the missing link then? Um, yeah, so the missing link is um, how we players handle ourselves. I think that's the best thing, you know. The shift goes where other players think we should put more, um, how can I say, it? we should put more pressure maybe on professional players, you know, like they believe more that professional players have to do more than the local players, you know. If you go to such a tournament, everybody must put in 100% a professional player or a local player because they are also professionals. But it's just that the shift goes much, the pressure goes much to professional players. Now, imagine that you are 11 or you are 18, the whole group, and then you put pressure maybe in one player or two players. It's not messy. <laughs> Even may sometimes feels the pressure, you know. So that's the shift that really gives a lot, a lot, you know. So for 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 me, I think if the if the local players can really gain more, uh, more belief and more confidence also from the professional players, I think we can have a good a good shift in the team so that everybody gives hundred percent and we're good to go. You talk about pressure. Not a week passes, maybe in the last three months, without your name and Patson's name, Patson Daka's name, being in the papers. How do you handle that pressure? Do you think Zambians are putting a lot of expectations on you? No, uh, for me and for me, I for me, I feel like expectations are good. If there is pressure, then you are good to do something better. For me personally, that's how I feel. I feel pressure is something that gives me even more power to go for what I want to achieve. So I, I take pressure as something that really motivates me. You know, if, if the whole country talks about Inoki Mwepu, then I feel like I'm doing a good job. And what should I keep on? What should I do that even I can even get better and better and better every time? It's the same pressure that motivates me. And I'll keep on working, I'll stay disciplined, and I'll do the right thing. Sometimes you have a bad day in the office, but you don't have to like feel like, you know, because this motivates my energy. So what she does is she just pray for me, she encourages me, and she tells me, babe, you're the you're good, you know. Doesn't that babe get calls from her competitors? Girls. <laughs> Actually, yeah, competitors are there, but it's me also to make it right. I think I... Does a babe get tempted? No, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I think, I think you know, it's, it's, it's important to know yourselves, you know. So the way I know myself, the way she knows herself, and the way that we take our Christianity life is something that motivates us and encourages us to stay even together. We don't look around what others say, even the competitors or what we fight Again, it's them. It's me and her and the world, you know. So it's it's, it's the two of us, me and them. Then we fight like, and the rest. So you and her against the world and using Christianity. World. Using. Christianity. You are in a sport that has accusations of juju. Yeah. Do you use juju? <laughs> I have juju in the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord. Yeah, I believe in God, mm. and I think is God is my juju. So everything I do, I. Just put in my Lord's hand and God gives. But does Juju exist? Yeah. Does Juju exist in football? To those who believe Juju exists, to those who believe in it, it exists. For me, I don't believe in it. I think if if you watch the Senegal game, they throw something, but we started encouraging ourselves that this is nothing. This is just a coin because I saw a coin and a plastic. This is nothing, you know. For Juju, it's just something that you they want to play against your minds, you know. So for me, I don't believe in Jude because I know that God is greater. God is bigger than anything. So 
For me, I don't believe in Jews. I only believe in God. One of the things that has also afflicted football is racism. How much of it do you experience in Austria? In Austria, I've never experienced racism, but I guess it's there. But maybe I've never just seen it. But I think in Austria, I've never experienced racism. And for sure, I wouldn't love to experience How about anywhere else? Anyone else, you know, <laughs> uh, also I've never experienced it. I've, I've really, we, I've traveled in so many countries in Europe and we see how many, how fans sometimes react because they want to frustrate you, they, you know, so that you don't give it your best. But that's, that's nothing to do with me personally and of course the team. And it, that depends on a player's perspective. How do you take it? Do you think about it? How do you handle that? You know. So for me, I really handle it in the right way. And the most important thing that I take it is that uh, God in me, and the Bible really gives me the instructions that I need to follow. So even if people insult me or whatever, because but I know that God is with me. You know. So that's the most important thing. That you are currently off season in sports like basketball. We've seen. Uh, uh, players like uh, LeBron James, mm -hmm. the late uh, Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. uh, taking on greats as they are on recess in order for them to sharpen their skills. Mm -hmm. Here we've got the likes of Kalusha, Charles Msonda, mm -hmm. name them. Do you sometimes play with them one-on-one -on -one in order for you to sharpen your skills further? Uh, for that, actually not. Really, I can say I've never come... Or I've never spoken to any great players and I would really love to speak to one of the greats like of course the great Kalu, of course uh, Chad Sonda and, and so many and so forth yeah, because those are, those are players that really have inspired me you know when you talk of those in those generations they really did great and massive things for the national team so they set a standard and in our generation, like me personally, I they inspired me a lot, and I just wanna follow their steps and do my best. And of course, if I can break their whatever they achieved, uh, I would be super proud of that. Generally speaking, what do you make of the state of Zambian football? I think it's developing. It's really developing. But what I found out is that Zambian football they don't believe in young players. But you are young yourself. I am young, yes. Yeah. And, I, and you started playing for your senior team whilst you were still under 20? Well, yeah, I'm talking of... Okay, I'll talk of the national team and the local player, you know. So I started playing because I went to Europe. I was in Europe. That's why they called me to play for the national team. But if I was here, I'm sure they wouldn't have taken me. I, 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 I'm not sure. But it happened so quick that I was in Europe, you know. But what I'm trying to say is that Zambian football is that they don't look at young players, even local teams, they don't look at young players. But that's the future. That's where football is, you know. So Don't you think it's a, as a result of maybe not having a quota system where foreign players can come and flood the local teams without a proper youth structure because the competition could be so rife and therefore the attention on youth players is taken away? Actually, that's, 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 that's the thing, you know. But... For me, what, what I would love to have is where teams have this youth structure, you know. Even if it's not youth structure, but in their teams, of course, when you look at Power Dynamos, when you look at Zanako, they have young players there. So the, the question is how do they motivate them to, to improve in their skills, to improve their football careers, you know. Do they give them games? Do they give, do they give them minutes to play? You find that they, 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 they neglect them and they just want all players to play because of maybe money and experience but you are forgetting of that player will become a great player in the next two three years time and that was me when i was at power dynamos they thought i'm young but they never knew how i would become in the next one two years time this is the problem and this is why today they think oh i'm young but i'm able to play in the national team and i'm able to play whatever you know because they didn't see that so European people, they took that opportunity that he's a great player and we're going to use him. And this is why I'm like this. So for me, I would love to, to see Zambian players to have a youth structure where they'll give young players some good games, develop them and 
yeah, so that they can mature early in football. That greatness also comes with your life off the pitch. And more often than not, Zambian players get accused of being flashy, driving expensive cars, not investing at their prime. Mm -hmm. How much are you worth? Oh, in terms of uh, <laughs> my transfer or just uh, just in my investment? At your transfer and investments. I think uh, for, for how much I'm worthy, you, everyone can check on my transfer market. Not everyone can. How much are you worth? <laughs> I think for now, uh, I'm worthy. I'm worthy ten million euros. So ten euros. Day, so yeah. And your investment? In my investment, um, I'm I'm trying to invest. I'm doing my best to invest in in a lot of things. Probably now I'm uh, I'm trying to invest in houses in flats and stuff, must try for my family. And as I go home for sure, then I'm trying to invest. In Are you money. trying to invest or you have that investment? I am investing, actually. I am the investment. God forbid if today you break your leg, um, will you be a pauper? For me, I'm a, I'm a guy who's really innovative and creative. Uh, I don't just play football actually. I'm a guy who's so inventive in a lot of things. Uh, I just don't want to be a victim in one thing. I want to save two things, three things, four things at a time. And so what are those three things, goal. four things that you are saving? Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm saving, I'm saving like trying to build houses. If I make houses and try to, my big ambition is try to make a formidable charity pit like the OYDC. This is my dream thing I want to build and I guess it will be more than the OYDC, like where I make a lot of structures for young kids, orphanages and you know, I want to build schools, I want to build hospitals there. I, this is my, this is really my, 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 my ambition. So if I can achieve this, I'll be really super proud. And I'm not looking at once I'm done with my football career, I'm looking at even if when I'm young, but can I achieve that? So that's what I'm trying to do. You are managed by Frederick Canute, a Mali legend. How much of his influence has changed your life? Frederick Canute is, um, is a well-known guy as a football player. And his humbleness is what really inspires me. He's a cool guy. He never sees that, oh, I'm a big guy, I played for Sevilla, I played for this, so I need to be, you know, like this, drive expensive cars, move in different places. He's a very cool guy and, and he inspires me with that. So even if I was to be rich, you know, or have a lot of things, I just want to live a humble life and just, in, just you know, respect others and just see life as a normal life, like the way you live the way others live, you know, despite me. So what does he tell you? Give me an idea. You meet with him or he calls you. Yeah. What conversations go on in as far as football is concerned? It's Including some... your babe, <laughs> Matilda. <laughs> uh, actually, she's, she's uh, I mean, he's, um, he's a guy who tells me to be a believer, to respect others. And when I talk of when I talk of football, is one who tells me you have to keep on improving. This is the whole thing. You have to keep learning. You will never be the best. You understand? You will never be the best. Just keep learning. Just keep learning. If you learn, 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 you'll see how how it feels to be the best. Then, so it's one who tells me all these kind of aspects, and he tells me my weaknesses so that I can improve in those weaknesses, and. Yeah, and that child is the one who I got some advice from him because I told him like, oh, can I tell what you think? I want to engage and stuff. And he was like, what are you waiting for? You know, it's, it's important to settle early in life so that you have a platform that you're going to make. And so I got also some advice from him. So that's why I did what I did. One of the things that we saw uh, during the under-20 Africa Cup that you won, um, Zambia was introduced to this phenomena, um, the Bola Nalesawan. Mm -hmm. 
how did it come up? Bola Nelesa, of course, meaning football with God. Football with God, yeah. Uh, actually, this is a team that that involves God, of course, everybody mm. knows. And if you look at what you do mm. in under 20 and the under 20, when you start the game, you always kneel down and pray. Mm. Uh, that doesn't actually mean that when you pray that God will surely wants us to win. No. And we don't just pray to say we are praying for this game. No, we pray because we believe in God. And He just wants us to, 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 to protect us, to give us the energy, to give us the power, you know, to go on of in this game, you know. Because God, the Bible says that God is for everyone, for the weak, the poor. So it's for us and for the other team, you know. So whoever wants it more gets it more. So the born and Actually, we introduced it in uh, under 17, but that time it wasn't just like popular. But in under 20, that's when it really came, came like popular. It became popular in that time. So, actually, I, um, I was the programmer of everything with the guys. So they used to call me pastor. You know, <laughs> you would preach. I would preach with, to the guys. So yeah. What's your favorite uh, verse? My favorite verse is John 3:16, which says. It says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him should not die, but have eternal life. For someone who loves Zambian football, local coach or a foreign coach? For someone who loves Zambian football, <laughs> both are okay. Both are okay. A local coach or international coach, both are okay. As long as that coach wants to change or wants to impart something in the national team, I think I would go for anybody. What is your greatest goal? My wow, <laughs> my greatest goal. I think for the national team is my first goal I scored against uh, Algeria. I think that was in 2017. My first derby. I think that was the best goal for me for the national team. For my club in Salzburg. I, also, there is one I kept in. I play, we played against at Mila, away game, and that was my first also game to play for the uh, like to start in the Bundesliga game, and I scored a very good, really, forty. It was beautiful. Proudest moment? My proudest moment is uh, in the game or in the game. <laughs> <laughs> my proudest moment is when I was at Anfield Stadium. It was beautiful. Saddest? The saddest thing is when I played, we played in the Europa League against Napoli. We were supposed to score four goals and three goals. If we score three goals, then we win. We qualify, of course, but we, I, made, I made a uh, breakdown and it finished in the goal, but we, we managed to win 3-1, so we couldn't progress. So that was the saddest part in my field. Yeah, it really felt bad because my breakdown made the team not too quite far. So, proudest moment of football in your private life? To be around my 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 fiance. <laughs> okay. It's beautiful and my family. It's really beautiful. Where do we see you in the next five ten years? What goals have you set for yourself? I've set really massive goals for myself. I wanna be playing for a a, a really big club, of course. My ambition is to play in the Premier League, so I'm looking forward that in that five years, I'll be somebody that will inspire a lot of, will inspire a lot of Zambians, of course, by playing in the, in the Premier League, in the top, top teams. Thank you, Enoch, for hosting us. All the best in your endeavours. Thank you so much for coming.